Hello and welcome to yet another episode of EV Fundamentals. And I'm doing this episode now because we just solved another big topic of motor control. And that is field weakening. Now, I highly recommend you watch the other EV Fundamental videos because they are kind of a basis for what I'm going to explain today. So, conceptually, what is field weakening? I'd say field weakening naturally happens in all motors out there. And that's because um, at increasing speed to uh, maintain the same torque, you need uh, to supply linearly more voltage. So if you want uh, 100 Newton meters at 1000 RPM, you need to input say 100 volts. If you want 100 Newton meters at 2000 RPM, you need to input 200 volts. And at some point your battery voltage is going to run out and you can no longer maintain your torque. In AC induction motors that isn't very critical because they will naturally weaken the field because there is, there is no static field in the rotor. The field is generated by current that's transferred from the stator into the rotor. And um, yeah, as that current in the stator becomes less, the, the current transferred into the rotor also becomes less and it always keeps at kind of an equilibrium. It'll lose torque naturally, but once you come off the accelerator, it's just gonna coast just fine. It's not gonna, there is no back EMF, so to speak, in AC induction motors. Quite different though in um, permanent magnet motors, which have a constant magnetic field in their rotor. So if you spin up an, an AC permanent magnet motor, it will generate a voltage. So you spin it at 2000 RPM, on the motor terminals you will find 200 volts, for example. And um, yeah, at some point you will find a voltage on the motor terminals that is larger than your battery voltage. And then if you don't do anything about it, this voltage is going to flow in back into your battery at a very high current rate. Say the motor is generating 500 volts DC, your battery is just 400 volts. These 100 volts have to go somewhere. And uh, it's just going to be limited by the resistance of your cables, the re internal resistance of your batteries and the resistance of theta bindings, um, how, how large this current is going to be. And you're going to feel it as unwanted region. It's going to break the car really hard. It can break motor mounts. It can um, make your, your rear end come loose, break loose if you have a rear wheel drive. So it's, it's really dangerous to not manage field weakening with permanent magnet motors. So far, I had addressed the problem somewhat, but yeah, not really. And for three years I've been trying to solve the problem and I was kind of slowed down because of the testing procedure. <laughs> so I had some vague ideas in my head how to solve it. I'd have to flash it on the car, go out onto a straight road, accelerate to really high speed and then see what happens if I come off the accelerator, for example whatever I wanted to test. And anything could happen. I could have unwanted region, brake motor mounts, I could have um, unwanted acceleration even. The car would just take off on its own and you have to force it to stop by using the brakes, which are luckily always uh, more powerful than your motor, by law. Good reason for that. Yeah, so what I want to say, it was really dangerous and cumbersome to test new ideas on this uh, field weakening topic. And yeah, I, I tried to read papers on the internet and I'm not really a mathy kind of person. I, as soon as, as I see Greek symbols, I tend to run away. So I just need to test in the real world more or less what happens. And now after three years, three years, finally a guy on the forum came along called Pete and he wrote a simulator for permanent magnet motors. And that meant I could shift, or we could shift, he also contributed um, the testing from the dangerous road, public road, to the couch. And that's what we're going to look at now. The simulator can um, display various 
parameters. And we are displaying, displaying bolts and apps. So I will make simulate a very light car so things run quicker. And we put the inverter in what's called manual mode, where we just manually specify D and Q currents you want implemented. So just real quick, I will um, show you the diminishing. Whoops. Let's not check mails now. Um, I will show you what happens if you just put constant torque reducing current into the motor. And then spin. Oh, the first one is always a bit dodgy. Here we go. Um, yeah, so you see with increasing speed, we have to increase the various voltages and at some point we reach the maximum pack voltage. We cannot increase voltage any longer and the current starts to diminish. Okay. Now let's see what happens if we coast. Okay, we're not commanding any more current, so the, the voltage uh, can drop. And uh, what you see, this um, blue voltage, so to speak, is the, the back EMF, the voltage generated by the roller still spinning with its permanent magnets. And the inverter has to, ex uh, to generate the exact same voltage in order not to generate a current flow. If it generates less voltage, we will have regen. If it generates more voltage, we accelerate again. Okay, so that's uh, the back EMF voltage that we need to compensate. Now what happens if we add quite a lot of field weakening current? Ooh, voltage drops. So now um, for this motor, I've pretty much cancelled out the magnetic field of the rotor. So now the, the um, Q voltage can pretty much drop to zero. Good. And if we reduce the field weakening current, let's try that. See, the Q voltage rises again. Um, yeah, and let's try the dangerous case of accelerating deep into the field weakening region. Let's do it like that. Oh, can we do one more acceleration step perhaps? Yes, it's still fine. And um, now let's command coasting. So now no voltage, no currents commanded at all, no field weakening and no no torque producing current. What happens? Oh, it all goes haywire. Yeah, so the controllers completely step out of shape. We uh, Here we only see a small blip of unwanted region. Doesn't look so bad. Well, I'm just kind of randomly simulating here. But anyway, we see unwanted uh, braking force. And after that, the, the Controllers just go crazy and we're probably shutting down with an overcurrent error. Yeah, so that is the problem at hand. And now we can see how we solved it. So we will now make the car a bit heavier. And we run in normal mode. Where we just command a total motor current that we want the controller to implement as best as it can. Good, let's start running. So, we see now that motor speed increases, the various controller voltages also increase, but we don't run out of voltage. We would have 200 volts at our disposal and we're just using 100 and 75. So that's good. So now the controllers still have a handle. They can increase or decrease voltage. They're not kind of stuck in saturation. That's what we want. Yeah, we can run for a bit more. You see the motor happily running. 
I just want to show you one more thing. Um, this blue current we see up here is a torque reducing current that's being derated to not hit the voltage limit. And also the red current is being derated to not hit the voltage limit. And the yellow current is our field weakening current. But yet it's not actually in effect. Because it's smaller, the magnet is smaller than the, the current that's commanded by the MTPA algorithm anyway. So right now, this is the same behavior as before. But now, we start coasting. Aha. So now something different happens. The torque producing current collapses, because that's what we want, we want to coast. But the field weakening, the D current, doesn't collapse because it's being held up by the field weakening command. We don't need as much as before. Yeah, but it doesn't return to zero and the controllers remain in check. And uh, we can... Oh, I kind of used the wrong field here. We can uh, command some regenerative braking. Okay, we see a bit of transient stuff going on here, but it, it's kind of caught after that, and uh, we do regen just fine. Good. So, yeah, this is what we're doing. You can see um, what is called throttle reduction. So we start at allowing 100% throttle, and then as speed increases, we allow less and less uh, by throttle, I mean torque. Torque. We allow less and less torque in order to um, to stay in check, to not go over the battery voltage. Um, also available is a power and torque curve. It could be interesting. So we see for the previous motor, um, we uh, see the throttle ramp here, and then we maintain constant torque for a while, 409 newton meters. And then pretty soon at like 600 RPM, we can no longer maintain the full torque and we go into the constant power region. So torque diminishes, but power stays pretty much the same because it, the speed increases. Speed increases, torque decreases, power stays constant. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the common curve of uh, permanent magnet motors, what they all do. All right. So that's the simulation. Let's look at the code that actually achieves this kind of behavior. So, most of the code in this uh, PWM generation run hasn't changed that much from back when I did the FOC video. Just some small details here and there, but in general it's stayed um, pretty similar. But this part has changed quite a bit. These, what is it, 15 lines is what does the field weakening. Let's kind of go over it line by line. So here we calculate what's called an amplitude error. And yeah, basically we configure a margin, how long, how, how far we want to stay from the, how far away we want to stay from the maximum battery voltage. And as long as we are far away, we, saturate this amplitude error at 100%. So we, we allow 100% torque command, basically. And then as we approach the maximum voltage, this amplitude error gets less. So we go from 100% to 50% and whatever is uh, appropriate. And uh, the lowest uh, we, we allow is 5%, because locking out torque altogether isn't really meaningful. So that's where we draw the line. Yeah, so amplitude error at low speed, it's gonna allow 100% um, torque and at higher speeds, it's gonna allow less torque. Now, amplitude error is going to uh, oscillate quite a bit uh, because it's kind of, yeah, there's a feedback loop in it and uh, 
Yeah, to dampen that down, we filter the amplitude error. And the filter constant right here is pretty high. It's like uh, 11. So, yeah, fil filtering means low pass filtering. So, we, we, eat, yeah, we dampen by low pass filtering. Quite similar to an RC low pass filter. But because it's digital, we have to pull some tricks. Um, there's going to be rounding errors in it, and to, to get rid of them or to, to stay far away from the rounding errors, we shift our amplitude uh, to the left by some bits, I think 8 bits, uh, and thus we, we don't have the rounding errors. Yeah, here if, we, if the mode is standing still, we, we reinitialize the filter to, to go back to 100% in all cases, um, because it didn't always do that naturally for some reason. Um, yes, and then we recover the original uh, filtered amplitude error by, by shifting it back again by 8 bits. And we have a voltage limit command. And the first thing we do with it is calculate the field weakening current. So the more we limit the torque, the higher the resulting field weakening current is going to be. The, I mean, the primary reason why we limit the torque in the first place is to make room for field weakening. Because if you already maxed out the inverter voltage, there's nothing we can do. We, we are saturated. Yeah, so we made room for field weakening current and now we, we use this room with field weakening current. Then we do the limiting to make the room, like I said, of the torque producing current. And we also need to limit the direct current, because these values, um, ID MTPA and, ID and IQ MTPA, come from the MTPA distribution. So we have uh, the magnetic torque and the reluctance torque. Magnetic torque is that one, reluctance torque is generated by that one. Good. And we need to diminish both to make room for field weakening. But practice has shown if you limit um, this too much, the, the direct current, uh, you, you lose torque faster than needed. So we allow the D current to be two times of the Q current. And then comes another bit that I showed you in the, in the diagram. As long as we have enough D current, which also weakens the field supplied by the uh, MTPA distribution. We don't need to actually implement the field weakening current yet. That, that only needs to happen if this drops below the field weakening current. Yeah, so here we take uh, whichever one is lower. And uh, yeah, we set the D controller reference to that. And uh, yeah, suddenly we have come to an end. That is basically it. That's all we need to do um, to not run into the amplitude boundary of our inverter. Keep the controllers in check, be able to overspeed the motor, be able to regen at overspeed and be able to coast at overspeed. Yeah, this is kind of a surprising end for me because it, it took so long to arrive at these few lines of code that, uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised by myself how quickly I could go over them. It's not, uh, I want to mention one more change that we found out we need to make, and uh, that is the angle value that's being used for the Park and Clark transformation and for the inverse Park and Clark transformation. Oh no, just Clark. That, that's the one that uses angle, right? I'm not sure. Anyway, so. Uh, up here we see that we, in FOC, we set an angle that we obtained from the encoder module, or from the resolver actually. It's still called encoder module. Yes, and we pass that angle to FOC, and we do our um, transforms using that angle. But once we go back, we find the right spot. Here we go. Once you go back from um, <clears throat> from DQ uh, voltages to PWM values, we use uh, what we call an advanced angle because the voltage values that we calculate will only step in effect 
one PWM period later. And that's what we uh, need to take care of. So the faster the rotor spins, the more the angle will have shifted by the time we actually apply our new voltages. And surprisingly, most papers you will find on the internet that show you the, the traditional Fock you know, kind of box diagram will not give you this piece of information. They just use the same angle for um, forward and reverse transforms. And neglecting this actually led to um, to my car accelerating on its own. Just that little detail. So to round it off, um, I want to give you a bit of um, application information, so to speak. So we leave the code and step into the browser. So I've pulled up the parameter window and uh, let's go over the parameters. The current KP, KI, that has pretty much stayed unchanged. Um, we only noticed you seem to, bit, uh, to need a bit more proportion again um, to, uh, to stay stable in the field weakening region. So you might have to retune that um, by looking at the plots. Uh, VLIM filter, that's a set filter that um, filters the amplitude error. Here it's 10, but uh, so far in all cars I've set it to 11. And, oh, oops. Mm, VLIM margin, that might be a bit of a redundant one because I don't see a reason to change it. It's kind of like how close you're allowed to, to go to the maximum voltage before the, the um, amplitude starts to be diminished. Yeah, might as well set that to a constant value in the code because I don't really see a point in changing it. Now this one is a really important one. It's um, the maximum field weakening current. It's also called characteristic current or critical current. And what it means is um, you've got your rotor magnetic field and you've got your stator opposite of it, opposing the field with field weakening. And um, you can only cancel out the field. So at some current value, in this case 100 amps, the field generated by the rotor will be completely cancelled out. And now if you increase the field weakening current above that point, above 100 amps, the field will actually start building up again in the opposite direction. And that's certainly not what you want. So field weakening current must always be below this critical current. Good. And then the next, uh, these are kind of tuning parameters. Um, for the MTPA algorithm that distributes your requested torque between magnetic and reluctance torque and depending on motor parameters. And one of them is uh, the difference between the quadrature and the direct inductance. And this values can be measured. I always let other people measure them and it's just put their values off the internet. So um, in case of the previous motor, it's two millihenry. And in case of the Nissan Leaf motor, it's 0.6 uh, millihenry. So yeah, somehow you have to get a hold of that value. Flux linkage, uh, similar. Uh, that one you can actually kind of try to find yourself by coasting down a hill or by spinning your motor in some way and observing the voltage that um, that is, uh, well, you could measure the voltage directly if you have the motor on the table and you're able to spin it with your cordless drill or whatever. And uh, yeah, from the voltage that you measure, you can arrive at the flux linkage. Um, I will link in the appropriate forum thread or forum um, post that uh, explains it. Okay, so then we come to sync advance. And uh, I think this should actually not be a parameter at all. I still left it in there in case we got it wrong in some way. So, um, but if you don't know what you're doing, you should not touch this parameter at all. For example, on a leaf motor, if you set this parameter to zero, you're gonna end up self-accelerating in the field weakening region. Yeah, so uh, leave it as it is. 
And also now since we introduced the proper field weakening, it's super important to get your sync offset right. Because for the first time in Open Inverter, we are now injecting a current into the motor that's not that's no longer governed by the throttle pedal. So you come off your throttle pedal completely, but we are still injecting current into the motor to, to weaken the field. And if that field weakening current is misaligned, it will actually produce torque. And producing torque means acceleration, unwanted acceleration. You totally don't want that, so sync offset. I'd say if you're within the ballpark, like plus minus 500, it's, it's gonna be fine. No need going into the tens or something, so yeah. Future plans for this is to uh, do some automatic tuning, but right now it's not automatic. You still have to do it manually. Good, and uh, yeah, apart from that, nothing's really changed uh, from the parameters. Yes, so I hope you found this video interesting about field weakening. And if you do, give it a thumbs up and all that. What else? Subscribe and bell and whistles and yeah. Thanks for watching anyway. See you next time. Bye bye.